ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to music broadcast q3 fy24 earning conference call this conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call these statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is been recorded i now hand the conference over to mr ashish kunken coe of music broadcast limited thank you and over to you sir thank you good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining the q3 fy24 earnings call for music broadcast limited joining me on the call is mr rajiv shah from our ir team and our investor relations partner strategic growth advisors i am pleased to share the financial outcomes of our company for q3 and the 9 month fy24 with you These accomplishments are the result of dedication and hard work of our team, and demonstrate our unwavering commitment to promoting growth and innovation in the ever-changing field of media and entertainment. For Q3 FY24 and nine-month period FY24, revenues grew by 11 and 13 percent respectively. EBITDA during the same period grew by 5 percent and 25 percent respectively. During the quarter, we made certain investment in employees in the digital side of the business. digital business has the potential to open new revenue streams enhance operational efficiencies and enhance customer experiences in the long run for the quarter our digital business has experienced a substantial 27% growth compared to the previous year demonstrating our agility in meeting shifting preferences and audience demands we believe our radio digital strategy has proven successful and a substantial portion of our additional revenue will translate into operating profit going forward on the growth in the advertising sector notable advances advancements have come to the forefront notably the jewelry industry saw a substantial growth of 44% year on year increase in the advertising spending the pharmaceutical market grew by 15% and the auto industry exhibited an impressive 26% growth compared to the previous year the finance industry witnessed a growth of 9% the government public service ad sector showed commendable growth at 22% and real estate advertising increased by 17% year on year these sector specific insights empower us to adjust our strategies and customize our services to meet the evolving needs of our clients at real city we have executed a range of strategies to expand our positioning in the radio industry in the third quarter we successfully retained the market share at 19% in our ad check market additionally our comprehensive omni channel framework allows us to maximize the extensive reach of our network ensuring the delivery of optimal value to our clients radio city continues to attract a significant share of both our existing and new clients with 40% of our clients on the radio platform choosing us for their advertising needs among new clients 33% of selected radio city as their advertising platform of choice further establishing our position as a preferred choice in the advertising landscape we take great pride in our commitment to diversify revenue streams with 31% of our revenue stemming from various sources such as properties proactive pictures digital ventures sponsorships and special events this diversified strategy plans the pivotal role in strengthening our overall financial resilience and stability furthermore we have achieved the second largest client count share in the industry reaching 40% in the 9 month fy24 period this stands as a testament to the strength of our client relationship and the value we consistently deliver in summary our experience at radio city is defined by progress innovation and flexibility we are dedicated to delivering top notch content broadening our market positioning and staying ahead in the dynamic landscape of the media and entertainment industry now coming to the financial performance highlights for q3 and 9 month period fy24 
for nine months FY24, revenue grew by 13% year on year to rupees 165.9 crores. EBITDA grew by 25% year on year to rupees 40.10 crores, while EBITDA margin expanded by 235 BPS to 24.2%. Adjusted profit after tax, which is adjusted for the interest on NCRPS to the tune of 5.8 crores, stood at rupees 9.7 crores. For Q3, FY24 revenue grew by 11% year on year to 60.4 crores. EBITDA grew by 5% year on year to 15.3 crores, while EBITDA margin stood at 25.3%. Adjusted profit after tax, which is adjusted for interest on NCRPS to the tune of 1.9 crores stood at 4.5 crores. In conclusion, I want to highlight that the way people in India consume media is changing. With lots of content choices, the radio industry can now use digital platform alongside traditional radio. At Radio City, we are staying updated with the latest trends by investing in digital technology to match what our audience likes. With this, I would request the moderator to open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The first question is from the line of San Sanika from Aparis Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Uh, you'll have to be slightly louder, Sanka. Yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Now you're audible, yeah. Yeah, so I want to know what are going to be the main growth drivers for the company and uh, in like next two, three years, what is the vision for a company? Like, where do we see a company? So, you know, if you look at uh, the way we have positioned our businesses, uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have kind of extended ourselves beyond radio as, you know, you would have, uh, uh, if you're closely watching us. So uh, we have got various uh, uh, arenas through which we uh, kind of generate our revenues. One is, of course, uh, the pure play radio, traditional radio that we have got. The other most important thing which we have been talking about, which we believe is a lot for the future and even currently is now significantly uh, contributing is the digital part of the business, which is making our presence felt in the digital uh, uh, world through our presence in social media platforms, through our own channels and through uh, you know, third party platforms. The other is you know, very clearly because we are in the business that we need and engage brands to kind of experience uh, consumers, we are also doing a lot of on-ground led events uh, which also is something which is contributing to now significantly now that, you know, it's almost two years post-COVID and you know, we are able to uh, effectively do a lot of events. So yeah, for us, it is, it is radio, it's on-ground events, it's digital and also building ourselves on content on third-party platform which gives us the reach and distribution which brands look out for. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Payal Shah from B Brilliant Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, first thing, like, what are the reasons that our EBITDA margin growth is uh, slower than revenue growth in first quarter? Yeah. So, you know, uh, if you remember, uh, you know, in, in the last uh, uh, investor call also, we had said that, you know, uh, uh, in the middle of this year, we'll be investing uh, in our digital uh, play for the next two to three years. And largely, when we talk about that, it is investing on people and certain uh, uh, technology, which will allow us to kind of expand uh, our uh, horizons. So, you know, when you look at it, 
uh, the way I would want you to look at it is to look at it for the nine month period. But however, I have to answer your question on Q3. Our investment uh, in Q3 has been much more uh, uh, enhanced. Uh, the margin of uh, growth between the top line and uh, EBITDA is uh, shown uh, differentially. Uh, okay, so just to follow up on that, like what kind of EBITDA margins uh, uh, should we expect going forward? See, we are already delivering 25% uh, approximate uh, margin. I would believe that, you know, uh, uh, very soon we should be seeing the erstwhile uh, 30% margin that we were operating uh, uh, before COVID. And that's the first point uh, that we are talking about. Uh, beyond 30%, a lot will depend on uh, the whole digital play that we are talking about. And we believe digital, I mean, I've been telling it time and again for us, digital will be the EBITDA booster. So going forward from... Uh, our, our, our short term goal is to reach the 30% margin and then of course, you know, try and build it up from there as our digital business increases. Sure, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Park Varsani from JK Advisor. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand, uh, have you seen any material increase in revenue due to this Ayodhya event? And uh, do we expect this Ayodhya event to contribute to a good uh, advertisement revenue going forward? So, uh, two reasons. Immediate, uh, because it is, uh, you know, just happened uh, in the current quarter, there has been a marginal increase because we've been able to create properties uh, uh, using the whole uh, fact that the world is looking at Ayodhya and Ayodhya was looking at a consumer increase uh, uh, in terms of the footfalls that the city was getting. So that's my first answer. The second answer is purely uh, the, you know, advertising is also very strongly uh, related with the sen sentiment that the country carries and if the mood and the sentiment is celebratory, you know, we believe that when the mood is celebratory, consumption increases. And if consumption increases, advertising increases. So, so are we, I look at it positively saying that if, if Ayodhya, the way it has started and if it continues to go the way it is, it will surely see a, uh, we will surely see a swell in advertising because of the mood being celebratory. All oh, right, sir, that is great, sir. Uh, so my second question was, uh, how are we seeing on uh, government advertisement spending uh, as the elections are coming? Yeah, so yeah, if you see, you know, already uh, the government spending has increased uh, by about 22%. Uh, 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 at the industry level, we have actually increased much more than that. So I, I, I personally believe that, you know, a 35% to 40% growth is what one should look at from now till the, uh, till the time the election, uh, uh, re re I mean, the dates are announced. All right, so that was really helpful. So thank you very much. Uh, that is, that is thank it. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ravi Shah from Bright Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. I just had a question. What were the advertisement rates during the quarter and by when do we expect to see increase in advertisement rates? See, uh, the advertising rate has been uh, more or less uh, the same from a Q2 to Q3 uh, because largely the business has been increased from a volume perspective. Uh, the next uh, point that I want to say that the current level of utilization has reached about 85%. So now if it continues between now and uh, it's always a, a story of once your, uh, uh, you know, your saturation of your inventory happens, that's when uh, you know, in, uh, rates get increased because that's beyond the point you can't take more, uh, beyond the, uh, in the number of uh, uh, minutes that you want to take. So uh, uh, it still come on the, uh, to, to give you an answer in a different form. Our growth has largely come from volumes and not come so much so far rate. So the positive side to look at it is that there is still a room for us to get uh, our revenues increased through the rate route uh, if we have to look at it from a future perspective. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you. That was it. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Kavin Shah. An individual investor, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. 
So I just wanted to understand, uh, uh, since we are investing in digital, uh, I would appreciate if you can elaborate more on the kind of technology which we are spending into and what kind of team we are building, uh, just to understand how this uh, business will, you know, uh, transform from radio to digital and what kind of revenue potential we can see coming up from digital in next three years or so. So just to understand on the overall, you know, the picture. So, you know, the play that we are talking about largely stems from the consumer behavior we are talking. So, we are, when we look at media today, you know, consumers, apart from listening to traditional mediums like radio, is also consuming a lot of content on, on social media platforms, on, on FB, on YouTube, and so on and so forth. That, that brands uh, uh, see that the consumers are engaging with content. So our investment is right now happening in from two levels. One is people who are, you know, well versed in the understanding of the behavior of the digital world in terms of how does the Gen Z, the millennials engage with various mediums and also with the various channels that they kind of engage in terms of content uh, consumption. So that means understanding how the Insta world works, how, the, how FB works or how YouTube works. So we are working at two levels. One is creation of content. Second is distribution of content on social media platform on other third party platform which will allow brands who come to us to reach out to a larger set of audiences. So there is an increased reach that the brands get and that we get a larger set of value because we are delivering far more beyond radio. Yeah, that's the first answer that I'm giving. The second answer is that in terms of investment, we are doing multiple levels of things. We are doing content creation. We are actively uh, uh, engaging our RGS as influencers. We, we all know about the social media world and how influencer marketing is taking over the world. So we are currently using all our internal resources as influencers when it comes to brands and engaging them with their consumers on the social media platform beyond radio and also in our case even on ground. So we are, we are taking out our strength in terms of engagement with the listeners or consumers as well as brands are concerned and straddling multiple media places and that are giving brand multiple opportunities to engage with their brands. Sorry, with your consumers. And sir, you know, apart from us, our uh, competition, I'm sure, would also be, uh, you know, looking at the same strategy. Or uh, am I wrong in my understanding? And what is our differentiator from them? Like, uh, you know, radio... Uh, differentiator will be, uh, you know, when you talk about the digital world, it's huge, uh, you know, from an influencer marketing mm -hmm. to brand marketing to, to advertising funded programming to uh, distribution of content and so on and so forth. So we have got multiple, uh, you know, uh, strategies which is straddling each of those uh, uh, places where the consumers kind of like, for example, music discovery. Today, mm -hmm. we are talking about uh, uh, our, our uh, music discovery currently is happening uh, through radio. But with, with the indie music, as we call the alternate music or indie music, as we call, they don't really get a straight platform because Bollywood has taken center stage when it comes to music. Today, we are working closely with the indie artists for them to be discovered. And once when they are discovered by, by brands or even content creators, there is a whole lot of uh, value and wealth created. And that wealth created, when it goes to us, there is a rupture that happens. So we are doing multiple things uh, in the field of discovery of music, in the field of marketing ourselves, and largely we are using our fan following, which is our RJ, which is, which is there across these spaces, and that is what fans look out for. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, you know, while the world talks about independent music today, Radio City Freedom Award is the first platform we started about 12 years back. Recognizing that there is an alternate world which is getting uh, registered from a consumer choices concern. And this is 12 years back I'm talking about. You might have seen the last two to three years active, uh, you know, increase of uh, interest in independent. But we, we are trend spotters in that sense. And for the last 12 years, continuously recognized talent, awarded them, given them a platform because we, we recognize them 12 years back when the world didn't recognize them. And today is the time we believe that we will now monetize by using them in various platforms, whether it is getting them to kind of view content to an OTT platform and so on and so forth. So there are multiple things that we are doing. Mm -hmm. So sir, is there any addressable market size for this? Or uh, I'm wrong in understanding it's a very... Huge market size. If you look at only the uh, influencer marketing platform, that influencer marketing platform in, in, in isolation will be three times the, uh, the, the radio revenues that we are talking about. 
in terms of the opportunity, just the influence of marketing. If you're looking at digital per se, it's already been 50% plus of the overall advertising market that we talk about. And world over, if you talk to marketers, there was a McKinsey study done about a year back saying that where do you do things that you'll be investing your marketing money? Uh, most of them felt that influencer marketing and social media marketing is where they'll invest 75% of their money. So then if money is going to be allocated to these mediums, we are already getting ourselves engaged in some form of the other and creating more and more opportunities for brands to be present in these mediums. Mm -hmm. And my last question, sir, is just to understand. On a global, in the global market or global industry, you know, other countries, other developed nations, is there a, uh, you know, such transformation from radio to digital? Uh, has some company done successfully and, you know, uh, have they grown from some X size to, say, multiples of X? In, See, it's you know, an evolution that is that way. Right, you, know, uh, you know, when you look mm -hmm. at entertainment as a medium, you know, it, it depends on how you're really looking at the media. You know, one classic example I can give you is, you know, we all, uh, you know, since you all are investors, you would always, know, all of you would know about Ronnie Spruwala, right? He was only a television distribution and uh, content creator mm -hmm. company. That right. one point he decided that he believed that uh, movies is parallel to the mm -hmm. entertainment and medium which he's closely working with. And the rest is history, as we all know, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, uh, while there are many global uh, stories of uh, brands transforming, and I think it is transformational, uh, transformation of people from the from the manufacturing industry through digital or the media industry to digital is a natural course of uh, uh, course that all of us will be following. The rest is followed for possibly earlier. Uh, we will be following closely, and there is enough and more reasons to believe that. You know, uh, the way I look at it, you know, you know, I always keep saying that I am in the marketing solutions business. So if there are brands and if there are consumers, and if brands want to engage with consumers, we will provide them the choice of consumers in the platforms of the consumer's choice. And hence today, I am creating content which is there in multiple platforms. Today, my, my content is there on streaming platforms. My content is there on all social media platforms. And most brands, consumers are lying there and that's the way where they engage. So we are creating a lot of content which is straddling multiple media spaces for brands to engage with the consumers. And that is our world order right now. And we are already present in a small manner. As we increase the strength that we have, we'll be more and more deeper and richer uh, uh, in this uh, uh, distribution part of the business when it comes to reach from a brand's uh, engagement. Okay, okay. Great, sir. Thank you very much. And, you know, uh, good wishes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Anand Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. My question is regarding the appeal which we have filed with the uh, Supreme Court in the matter of judgment yes. delivered by Madras, where they have told that the, all the digital provider has to pay 660 rupees per needle hour so from the decade 2010 to 2020. And uh, in your notes, you have said that ki, mane ki, uh, you know, in general assessment, you see, don't see any policy, any outcome, outflow of economic resources. I would like to ask if by any chance the verdict is against the duty provider, then what can be the possible liability arising out of the pain by the civil monetary term, actually? See, this has been there for years now, and uh, as, a, as an industry, we are quite positive that there will be no adverse, uh, uh, you know, uh, judgment that will come against us. However, since right now it is still in the court of law, and we believe that the industry has a very strong point uh, to fight for, and uh, over, a, over a period of time the results will come in. So at this point in time, uh, not just me, I think the entire industry is confident there will be no liability, because we are very clear that we are paying as much uh, that is required, and if there is any liability, that has to be with third parties or people who are using uh, either the singers or the legacies the way they are doing in generating their own business. So in any case, like even the, uh, the, adver the judgment uh, uh, is adversely against the company, when I, there is no monetary uh, outflow which can be arise out for the company, you know to say. Sorry, sorry. Even in the case, there is an adverse judgment against the company. In that case also, there cannot be any monetary outflow from the company side, you know to say. 
No, if there is an adverse there is an adverse event, the entire industry will have to go through the exercise and find what is the kind of uh, uh, outgo that one has to look at. But you know, uh, that that is a situation that none of us are, uh, are sure, uh, all of us are sure that we will not reach that because, and plus this has been going for a while. If the case has been so simple, it would have been addressed long term back. You know, it is not addressed because of the complexity. And we very strongly believe, not just us, you know, we also have a battery of all our senior lawyers who believe that we have a case. And, uh, you know, beyond that, honestly speaking, uh, Anand, it will be speculation. And uh, uh, speculation uh, is something which I can't really say much about, you know. I mean, I agree. The thing is that the, the party has filed the case and we lost in the Madras side. The Madras side was given a judgment. In any case, like a liability has to be assumed like if, if something comes up, then what can be the monetary liability the company can face off actually? That's my question actually. See, see uh, Madras High Court has, uh, uh, is the reason why we very strongly believe because the judgment was given on uh, understanding which we very strongly now know that the one, uh, because it was done in a, uh, you know, I don't want to talk about the, 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 the way the judgment is given because it's subjudice and okay. any comment from mine will not be uh, right. But... Okay. Uh, uh, Madras High Court has only given us more uh, reasons to believe that we are in the right course. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the, li from the line of Ruthi Gupta from Value Consultancy. Please go ahead. Hello, Ruchi. The next question is from the line of Kastu, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello? Yes, you can hear me. Audible? Yeah, you are. Slightly louder will be better, but you are audible. Sir, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. So my uh, first question to you was how much investment have we made uh, in the digital business? See, it's, it's just a people business. Like I said, you know, on an average, uh, you know, the kind of investment that you do on our staff is about 8 to 9 percent that we do on an average. But uh, depending on the quarter to quarter, depending on which quarter we are, you know, uh, incubating some of the uh, digital uh, way forward uh, incubation that we are doing, so, you know, uh, in some cases it will be marginally 10 to 12 percent, but well within the uh, management of our PNL at this point in time. So, to answer your question, is that a substantial interest? No. But is that an interest which will affect our PNL? Yes, because, you know, we are working with a very tight uh, PNL. So, any additional interest, uh, sorry, investment will have a marginal uh, outcome on our PNL. Okay. And so, second question was. Is there any, uh, there was an increase in the expenses, right? So any reason for the same? See, you know, uh, you know Q Q3 being the uh, most important quarter, there are certain investments, both from a marketing perspective and also from a creation of IP, which goes a little higher. And hence, you know, you will find that, that the investments are a little more, and hence the costs have gone up a uh, 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 little higher than what it would have been in the previous quarter. Okay. Okay. So that would be it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Shah from Bright Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you again for taking my question. I just have a few questions. How is the algorithm spending market? And how did the festival season pan out? And as well, which sector do you expect to see good traction? So, uh, yeah, the festival season has been good. And, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the sectors which have done well is uh, uh, real estate, pharma, uh, auto, uh, and, and, and to an extent now uh, even government for us, you know. Uh, and I believe uh, as we go forward, uh, auto, uh, real estate, and pharma will continue to grow and finance will grow in this quarter, you know, uh, usually Q4 is the quarter where finance uh, uh, increases. So these are the sectors that will grow uh, uh, for Q4 and uh, going forward, I believe uh, real estate and pharma continue to grow and uh, to be followed by auto. Okay, thank you very much. 
Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. As there are no further questions, I would like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Kuken for closing comments. Please go ahead. Thank you. We sincerely appreciate your participation in today's earnings call. We believe that the changing media consumption habits of the Indian audience, given by the availability of various content options, has created an opportunity for the radio industry to embrace digital platforms while maintaining radio at its core business function. <coughs> Sorry. Our focus continues to accelerate the digital future by leveraging resources and relationships to offer maximum value to our customers. The presentation, earnings release, and results are all available on the corporate website and stock exchanges. If you have any further inquiries, please get in touch with any one of us or with strategic growth advisors or investor relations partner. Wishing everyone a very happy new year. Thank you. On behalf of Music Broadcast, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.